Second half now, and the Bears wasted no time making plays. And I told Sully in the booth, Coach, it would be nice to make a defensive statement. Well, instead, you make a special team statement right here. And Al Lasker gets in on this, rips it out. Well, you've got Lasker, you've got uh, uh, Bryce French, and uh, several other hats there wearing silver and strip and uh, the scoop and the score by, by freshman Al Lasker. And now we've got the lead, 21-20. Just like that, strip, scoop, and score. And it was a, a great sign of things to come, another nice uh, defended ball right there by Peters and man again they went after him all night long and he certainly earned his scholarship violent collision right there almost a turnover for the Bears it uh, when it rains it pours and it was definitely pouring in the third quarter in favor of UCA you know certainly I think turnovers has played a huge role in our run here the last uh, you know five or six seven weeks and uh, you know tonight I think we've got uh, you know, three or four more as well. You turn them over on, they, they punt it back to you. You get it to Desmond Lewis right here, the, the freshman. And again, you know, one thing was kind of unique. They, they were letting guys battle at the end of plays, weren't whistling people down when their momentum was stopped. Come back to Lewis on a sideline rider, just an unbelievably spectacular catch. Well, the freshman from uh, North Mesquite there, just a big body, strong with his hands, and a perfectly thrown ball uh, by senior Nathan Dick from Allen, Texas. Uh, showed a lot of poise here on the check down to, to Jackie Hinton. We come back on the quick game again, and I couldn't be more pleased and more happy for Dominique Croom, the junior from Cherokee, Alabama. Rough first half, made a statement here in the third quarter. Well, you've seen him making up plays. I'm sure you weren't too wary of going back to him, Coach. And, boy, he not only makes the grab on a critical play, but he gets into the end zone. Just a great job right there. And the defense, I'm talking fast and furious, and it was, uh, it was fun to watch. Well, they, you know, they, they came out here and, you know, running the quarterback, and uh, we missed a couple of fits. But, uh, uh, but you can see, uh, you know, we – playing good tight coverage and guys are flying around and certainly when you're up by two scores and this was just a big violent play here by by sophomore Markeith Gaines and plays with a hot motor and Whew. and uh, very exciting player uh, on our defensive line. Yeah the hair was on fire and, and there were a couple punts there coach that almost hit your guys in the back just some line drive kind of end over ends kind of ugly well, yeah. and, and then get you in trouble a little bit there. Well the rugby punt is a you yeah. know is a dangerous weapon and uh, right here on the quarterback power we continue to Make sure we present a run game with our quarterback. Great protection. Super job here by Bobo. Another third down conversion. Uh, this was a special play we had in for this week against some of their coverages, and he executed it twice on third down for big plays. I love this play, the uh, end around to Jesse Grandy, and you go to the short side of the field, and he's kind of dead to rights right there, but it, he's hard to get one-on-one -on -one for sure. Well, you know, he's just an exciting, electrifying player right here. we got to do a little better job of we get the first down, but you know, finishing north-south right there, the junior from uh, from Pine Bluff, uh, throwing catch to the back of the end zone, just just overthrown again. They called the pass interference, pass interference on interference. There, had a hold, and then. Boy, I tell you what, these guys play great red zone run defense, and uh, we had to kind of resort to our bag of tricks, and uh, fortunately, <laughs> uh, we hit Thomas Hart, the freshman from Amy, Louisiana, coming back to his home state. Uh, for a touchdown. Yeah, well, consider him tricked. I mean, that was about as well executed. I've seen you guys run that a few times over the years. That was about as good as I've ever seen it work. And Thomas is going to be uh, maybe a pretty good weapon going forward. No question. Our defensive line right here is playing very fast. I mean, oh. we're we're dominating them up front. We felt like there's Larry uh, <laughs> Duvall, the junior from Mariana, Arkansas. Once again, uh, Marquis Gaines, and uh, we know put make them put the ball on the ground and. You know, wow, just, you know, the, the passion and the energy and the competitiveness that our football team showed. And this was kind of a tricky play right here. We call for a fair catch, <laughs> and then Grandy catches it on the bounce. Well, it looked like he was going to bounce into the back of one of your players if he didn't grab it, and he, he makes the one-handed play, and then you go right back to work. Jesse Grandy, I thought we might have picked up a penalty there. got thrown well, down. I'm going to tell you, that might have been the finest ball that, that uh, Nathan Dick threw now into yeah. the win. He put it on a line, and nice throwing catch to Grandy. We come back with Jackie Hinton. Uh, you know, again, he only played in. You know, three quarters, but, you know, some of his 74 yards rushing. And, you know, their, their kid made a nice play. We were trying to get soft on the corner route. and uh, Boy, well thrown. Very well thrown. And, uh, you know, they started making us bounce a little bit, some of our inside run game. And uh, you know, we started going to more two backs here a little bit later in the game. You get held out of the end zone here, Coach. Try to go up to Grandy. Makes a fine play right there. You end up settling for a field goal attempt. And Eddie Kamara, solid as he's been the last few weeks, 25 yarders good. It's 38-20 at this point. But you could tell, I mean, this team smelled blood in the water. I mean, you guys got after it. Well, we wanted to play hard and really get after it for 60 minutes and compete for 60 minutes. And, and you know, and I thought we did. Again, we, 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 we lose contain here and we leak another one out. We've got to get this cleaned up uh, by next week. It's something we continue to work on. 
and our young men are going to take a lot of pride in getting that fixed. Once again, they're trying to, you know, get the get the fast uh, big ball over the top, but probably again one of six or seven passes that Marcus Peters, the sophomore from from Dangerfield, defended all night. Nice play right there, Jesse Sims. Good open field tackle. Absolutely, one of his eight tackles on the night. Again, tremendous pressure and great coverage again by Peters into the boundary. And obviously, they went after our corners tonight. And uh, outside of a couple throws, that they really held up. Well, now it's time to run clock. And I know you guys are trying to run your six, seven minute offense, just trying to eat some clock. And they did a pretty good job of stepping up here and playing aggressive. And you know, they got nine on the box. I mean, they know what's coming. They're not, you're not going to be tossing around the yard when you're up like that. Well, and. Uh, we, we, we let a little bit too much pressure here on the on the punt, but uh, Kevin Buford, I think, has done an extremely solid job here the last month or so. Uh, we get a roughing the uh, the kicker call, another physical run here by by Jackie Hint. But let me tell you now, Northwestern State flies around. Those yeah. safeties are very physical. They play downhill. Uh, there's you know coming up for a three or four yard gain right here, uh, but we're able to control the clock a little bit, make a couple of first downs, punt it down deep, and. Uh, you know, we turn one loose here, but we're playing pretty, pretty soft right now on the back end. Yeah, we saw that run by Jackie. 20 carries, 74 yards, and three quarters of play today. So uh, he certainly got his work in in a short amount of time. And defense sitting, sitting, sitting. And boy, Marcus Peters worked hard all day, and it was nice to see him get a payoff at the end of the day. He could go, and he does. And 55-yard uh, return, and that would provide the final margin. 45-20, the final. And what a great way to finish it for him. I mean, he really. I think he earned his scholarship for the next couple of seasons, Coach. I mean, he was getting after it. Well, they, uh, you know, he rose to the challenge today. Him and Dominique Brown on the, yeah. you know, they're out there on the island, you know, a lot of times, and uh, they get a little bit of underneath help, but not a lot over the top. But uh, uh, we rolled the coverage into the boundary. It was a great call by Matt Williamson, and uh, nice ball skills uh, by Marcus, and he was able to finish it. So uh, I was real proud, proud for him for that. Well, one thing I'll say for the Bears is when the defensive guys get their hands on the ball, they know how to get it to the other end of the field. I mean, they're awfully good at scoring when they get opportunities. Well, and you talk about blood, you know, in the water, right. uh, you know, it's contagious. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Al Lasker with a scoop and score, and then Peters, of course, and then, uh, you know, the offense uh, was able to move the ball and, and get some things going in the second half. So a complete team win. I feel like the kid in class who had his uh, answer stolen by the kid in front of him because we're going now to our sonic play of the game. And we go back to the Lasker play. And, and boy, you want to talk about trying to set the tone for the second half. Hey, anybody down the road, if you're trying to set the tone in the second half, a strip, a scoop, and a score is a good way to set the tone. Absolutely. And we needed it. You know, we needed some uh, lift on the sideline, a little bit of momentum. And, you know, after the kickoff, uh, we had several hats around the ball, Bryce French, uh, Al Alaska, those guys, uh, they got after it. Uh, Desmond Lewis was around the ball, then Al picked it up, scored. And just like that, in one play, going down six to up one, and that lifted our football team. AT&T players of the game coming up in just a moment. Stay with us. Real Yellow Pages, YP.com, and YP.com on your mobile. More ways to search, more ways to find. Only from AT&T. At Zaxby's, all of our salads are made fresh to satisfy any craving. Like the blue, with a bold taste of real blue cheese and buffaloed or blackened chicken. The house, or the Caesar. With so many flavor-packed choices, you'll be seeing salad in a whole new way. Guess someone forgot to tell us that salads are supposed to be boring. Zaxby's, indescribably good. Welcome back. Time now to take a look at our AT&T players of the game. And on offense, we will start, uh, we could have probably gone a couple of different ways here, but we're going to go with a young man who got his second scoring uh, touchdown as a receiver, Brett Soft. Yeah, Brett, the junior from Wichita, Kansas. Uh, and, you know, Terrence Bobo made some critical plays and a touchdown run earlier, but, but Brett is just continuing to raise his level of play. I think he had three catches for about 36 yards, but a huge touchdown there at the end of the second quarter that kind of kept us in the football game. Yeah, it happened right over here behind us, and he forced the defensive back to the ground and then ran by him for, uh, and then stretched into the end zone. It was a great individual left. And then defensively, uh, we're going to go with Marcus Peters, who, I mean, he was, it seems like he was in on about every single play. Well, he had eight total tackles. Of course, he had the, the interception return for 55 yards for a touchdown, but probably had to defend probably six, seven, eight deep balls throughout the night. Very proud of Marcus, the, uh, uh, the sophomore from Dangerfield, Texas, and uh, 
you know, we're going to need him to play big next week because uh, against Texas State, we'll probably be playing a little bit more man coverage. Yeah, I want to give an honorable mention, too, to Seth Allison, who had a couple of sacks and a bunch of tackles, and Mark Keith Gaines, who just played yeah. with his hair on fire the whole game. He was fun to watch, certainly. And that motor is a lot of uh, very key for you guys, certainly going forward here. And then our uh, log cabin sat of the game, Coach, and it's, it stays on the defensive side of yeah. things, holding them down in the rushing attack. You knew it was something they wanted to do, and you just imposed your will against it. Well, big physical offensive line, some good backs. They'd like to run the quarterback, and uh, we did a you know spectacular job. Our body of work, Northwestern State ran the ball for 87 yards on 37 carries, and uh, a little over two yards a carry. And when you can do that with a running team, uh, it got them out of their game plan and forced them to do some things that they probably weren't very comfortable doing. Well, for the last six weeks, this team has been in playoff mode. Every single win critical for a chance to play in the postseason. And it finally comes down to this. Texas State in Conway, 4 o'clock kick. And, uh, you know, they're, of course, leaving the conference, going on to play in the WAC next season. I know you'd like to, to send them out with a loss. More importantly, I know you'd like to make your first Division I appearance in the postseason um, for UCA. Well, it's a big week. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, the season, you know, it's down to one game. Uh, we sit here at 7-3 and three overall. Uh, we have six Division I wins. We need this seventh Division I win. We're going to have to have a great week of preparation. Now, this is a very physical football team. Uh, we finished the year in conference play 6-1, and one, which in 2008 we won the league title with a 6-1 mm -hmm. and one record. Certainly there's some other conference games that have to go on, uh, you know, that uh, uh, behind us. But, you know, we can't control Sam Houston State. I think Northwestern plays them next week. And then uh, that probably, the, you know, the last shot that we've got of them losing. But what we can control is how we prepare this week. Uh, trying to get a big crowd out to first security field at Estes Stadium. We've not lost on the, on the stripes this year. And it's very, very important that we have a, a great week of preparation, uh, that we stay loose but very focused. And uh, the guys that need to get healed up, we need to get them well. And then we need to you know, go out and put a good plan together and play well uh, you know, next Saturday and finish the regular season you know, the way we want it, you know, the way we started and the way we want to finish. Yeah, well, this run has been pretty remarkable, Coach, when you think about it, too. You had to play more conference road games than home games, mm -hmm. and to go 3-1 and one on the road in this conference any year is spectacular. Well, you know, it seemed like we didn't play at home very much at all right. this year. Yeah. Uh, but it's certainly uh, uh, encouraging and rewarding to know that we're going to be playing our last game of the regular season at home. And so we need our fans and our students in particular to come out and tailgate, enjoy the collegiate exter experience, because with a win, uh, I, I'm quite confident that this football team will be playing in the first ever NCAA Division I championships and be the first team on our, uh, from our university to do such. And so uh, a lot's at stake this week in practice, in the meetings, in the weight room, and certainly next Saturday at, at uh, 4 o'clock when we play the Tech State Bobcats. All right, good luck this week. Appreciate it. All right, it's a big one for the Bears coming up, and it was certainly a great one for the Bears here in Natchitoches, Louisiana. We hope to have you back with us next week on the Central Arkansas Football Report. The Clint Conk Radio Show with host Justin Acre is on Thursdays at 7 p.m. at JJ's Grill in Conway on 103.7 The Buzz. Stick around after the show to catch Thursday Night Football on JJ's 110-inch HD screen. And remember to come out for JJ's Big Fat Greek Call-In Show Challenge. Craving Central Arkansas sports? You have plenty of chances to see your favorite teams in action. Bear football is nearing an end with homecoming on October 29th against Southeastern Louisiana and the final matchup of the regular season against Texas State on November 12th. Military and public safety personnel will receive free admission to the game. Then the Sugar Bears tip off with the two biggest names ever to enter the Ferris Center. Indiana comes to Conway on November 11th with Alabama following on the 15th. For info and tickets, call 852-2234 or visit ucasports.com. Everybody have their new AT&T BlackBerry? It's 4G, so you can do more faster. So, Catherine, post more YouTube videos of your baby acting adorable. Baby, on it. Matt, ignore me and keep updating your fantasy team. Huh? Jeff, uh, play a game. Triple boosting now, sir. Dennis, check in everywhere you go on Foursquare. That's Mayor Dennis of the water cooler. You're the best. Liz, rock out to Pandora. Oh, no, I'm an only child. And Nick, you shouldn't even be here. You can do everything from the golf course. Good? Good. On AT&T, BlackBerry Torch moves at the speed of 4G.